We have separated the elements so that now we can treat them individually. We can control the look of the background without influencing the car, or vice versa. We can individually treat the car paint, or the rims, or some other parts. We used layers and render layers for this. In some cases, object or material indices. But this is still not the level of control I am looking for. I would like to have the access to several components of the image. My goal is to be able to, for example, change the intensity of reflections or color of specular, maybe even the color of the material. So for every single render layer, I would like to have the render passes. We activate the passes here. We have combined, Z, vector and so on, color, diffuse. When the checkbox by the pass is activated, it means that I have the access to the image that represent this particular component of the image. Some passes can be excluded from the combined pass. Combined pass is how the render would look like if we didn't decide to combine it from separate components. So here, in this render layer, in case of ambient occlusion, I have excluded it from the combined pass, but the reflection pass, for example, will be included into the combined pass, but I also have the individual access to it. But what are those passes and what do they really represent? The passes are render engine specific. Those are the passes for Blender's internal render engine. If we change the render engine to cycles, we as well have the access to passes, but they are completely different. But in this episode, I will concentrate on Blender's internal render engine. We have the access to several passes, but they are not necessarily created the way that fits the compositing concept that I would like to show you during this series. This concept is to have the access to three major groups of passes. The first one is the color, and that's just the color of the material that can be set as the diffuse color specified here, or like in this case, by applying a texture. And here's the second group. Let's call it shading or lighting. This group is the influence of the lights on the colors. It can be separated into groups. Direct light, so the influence of the lamps. Indirect light, influence of the meshes that can emit the light. Then the ambient light and environment light. I will explain them in details in one of the next episodes. Then we have reflections. Regular reflections, so how other objects reflect in the material we are working on, and the specular. Specular is in fact a kind of reflection. This mimics how the light source reflects in our material. So indirect light, ambient light, environment light don't give any specular. This is linked to the direct light. So if we decide to light our scene using only those groups of lights without using the lamps, we won't have any specular. You may wonder why I didn't say a word about shadows or ambient occlusion. Two reasons. First, I will come back to it in some other episodes. And second, they are parts of shading or lighting. Shadows are strictly connected to direct light. Ambient occlusion is a part of ambient light or environment light. If we treat shadows and ambient occlusion like this, we can use a simple math to combine all those things together. We can simply add all of the light sources and multiply it by the color. Then we can simply add the reflections to it. So that's the formula that we will be using. Lighting here is the sum of all of those components. Reflections is the sum of those two components but I will explain it in details in the episode about combining the passes. Okay, so this is what we want, and this is what we have. Let's take a closer look at the passes that we have by default, analyze them so that we know what is missing. Let's analyze the car paint. We have the direct access to the color. We simply activate the color pass, and this is how it looks like. So it's just the color of the material without any shading, I don't have any texture applied to this material, so that's just the flat color exactly the same as specified here. Now the direct light, influence of the lamps. It is something that in fact is missing here. We have two passes that can be treated as the parts of direct light. It's the diffuse pass and shadow pass. Theoretically, when we multiply the diffuse by the shadow, we would get the direct light, but not 100%. 
Because when we take a look at the diffuse path, we see that the color is mixed into it. That's why in previous episodes I often used the term colored diffuse. In most of the other render engines, the diffuse path looks like this. So it's simply not mixed with the color. Then theoretically, when we multiply this by the shadows, we would get direct light. There are, however, issues with shadow paths, but I will come back to them in the separate video about shadows. We will solve those issues by creating separate render layer using a certain material just to have the separate direct lighting pass. At this moment, let's simply multiply the proper diffuse pass that looks like this by the shadow pass that looks like this, and we will get this. And that's our direct light. If the direct light is the only light source in our scene, we can multiply it by the color, which is done in this node, and we get this. If we had indirect lighting, environment lighting, ambient light, we would add them here and use the sum of those lights as the second input of this node. So if this is our direct light and this is our color, and here's the product of them, we can very easily change this color. Let's pass it through the mix node. And now we can set the color of the material to whatever we want. So we have the access to two components that, if set properly, will create our direct light. What would happen in real world? Let's say that we have only one light source, this lamp for example. The rays from this lamp go here, some of them are blocked by those trees, but some of the light will pass through the holes here and will eventually hit our car paint. In fact, shadows shouldn't be treated separately. If the light is blocked, it's blocked. It simply doesn't go further. But the diffuse doesn't take it into account. Diffuse works as if no other objects were present in our scene. So it depends only on the kind of the material that we use, on the kind of the lamp, its intensity, its color, its direction. So the clean, not colored diffuse pass is the sum of the energy of all of the lamps in our scene that hit a certain point on our object. So it depends on the lamp, on the angle, on the kind of the shader that is used, and on this parameter intensity. By the way, this intensity parameter is in my opinion completely useless. The only purpose of it is to make the setup more complicated. In 99% of my setups, I use the intensity of one for all of the materials in my scene. From the compositing point of view, this is just a multiplier. If instead of using intensity of 1, I would use, I don't know, 0 0.5, the result will be exactly the same as if I changed the color values here. Simply divide them by 2. But I will come back to it a little bit later. This parameter is taken into account when creating the diffuse pass. No matter if it's clean, proper diffuse pass or colored diffuse pass as we get here in Blender. Clean, not colored diffuse pass may be created very easily simply by changing the diffuse color to pure white. Pure white has the values of one for each channel. So when we multiply something like this by any color, we would get the colored diffuse. We would get this. So in my case, this diffuse, clean diffuse, is created exactly this way. I have simply created the separate render layer where I set the color of the material to pure white. Here I can take the color pass, multiply it by this clean diffuse, and I will get this. And you will notice that this is exactly the same as the color diffuse as given by default. Those images are exactly the same. And now the shadows. This represents how the light is blocked. So here, as you can see, it's pure white, no matter what is the angle, what is the intensity of the lights, because here the lights are not blocked by anything. Here it's pure black, because the light is blocked by the trees. So the combination of the clean diffuse pass and the shadow pass, the product of them, gives us the direct lighting. Indirect light, so influence of the meshes that emit light. In my scene, I don't have any emitting meshes, and indirect lighting is disabled. At the moment, in Blender's internal render engine, indirect lighting works only when the approximate method of gathering is used. In my scene, I use the ray trace. So I will show indirect lighting using this simple scene, where I only have the plane like this, here is the monkey, 
they have some standard materials and this plane has the material that emits the light. This scene doesn't have any other light sources. As you can see, indirect lighting works very similarly to the diffuse. And this is how the indirect lighting pass alone looks like. As you can see, the colors of the materials are completely ignored. The tint that this image gets comes only from the color of the emitting mesh. Indirect lighting is one of the reasons of problems that may be caused by this intensity in the diffuse panel. In the combined pass, this intensity is taken into account. So if this is the color of our monkey, and that's the intensity parameter, combined pass, when indirect lighting is used, is created such that this color is multiplied by this value, and only then it's multiplied by the indirect lighting pass. So if we combine indirect lighting into our composite, we have to take it into account, and it's not very easy if we have differences in intensities in other materials. That's why I strongly encourage to always use intensity of one. This will allow us to avoid certain unnecessary additional steps when compositing. There is another issue with indirect lighting pass, which is that the light is not blocked by the other objects in our scene. As you can see, we don't have any shadows here in this area. This plane is lit as if this monkey didn't exist. So that's how it works when the meshes are the only light sources, but we have a little bit different behavior when we use some other light sources. Here I added the sun lamp, and that's my render. I didn't use any shadows, so this is the combination of the diffuse, color, and indirect light. This is how the diffuse pass looks like, that's the color, and here's the indirect lighting pass. As you can see here on this part of the monkey, we have the tint that comes from the color of this plane. This is because of the bouncing light that comes from the lamp and it bounces off the plane and hits the monkey. If we get rid of the emitting mesh, this is our render. In the combined pass, the influence of this mesh of this plane on the monkey is not very strongly visible, but that's how the indirect lighting pass looks like. None of those meshes have any emit value, but anyway, indirect lighting pass is not empty. It represents the light that bounces off other objects. Here we also have the pass that is called emit and I very rarely use this pass. I have added the sphere here and applied the material to it with the emit value of 0.2. This will have the influence on the indirect lighting, on the combined pass which is rather obvious, but when I activate the emit pass it will show up there. So that's our render, that's the diffuse pass, the emission of this material doesn't have any influence on this pass, Here's the color, here's the indirect lighting. This mesh has the influence on the plane here and on the monkey, but this influence is not very strong because the emission value is very low. And on this sphere we see the light that bounces off the other objects. And here's the emit pass. This is just a flat color. And in fact it's nothing more than this color multiplied by this value. When we want to combine the emit pass into the composite, we can simply add it. But it's very easy to add emit pass even if the emit pass is not activated. We can take the color, multiply it by the emit value and we have the emit pass. Now let's take care about the ambient light and environment light. There is an ambient occlusion pass that is a part of those light sources. When we analyze the ambient light, we can imagine the sphere that surrounds all of our objects and emits the light. If we take the color of this light, and add it to our image, to our shading lighting, we would have the flat result. So the ambient occlusion, this artificial pass, mimics how this surrounding light would be blocked. When the ambient occlusion is white, in those areas for example, it's almost white, it means that the surrounding light will not be blocked at all. The darker the ambient occlusion, the less ambient light will be received by the object. So ambient occlusion shouldn't be treated separately. The ambient occlusion doesn't represent the light, doesn't represent the shadows, it represents how the light is blocked. I will explain more details about ambient occlusion in separate video. If the ambient light has pure white color, it is in fact equal to ambient occlusion. But if we use some other color of ambient light, we have to multiply it by the ambient occlusion. We can as well use the environment light. That's the light that is emitted by the environment, in our case by the sky. Here we can set its energy, we can use sky texture, sky color, then the texture of the sky will be ignored, 
but those colors will be taken into account. We can also use the white environment lighting. When we set it to white, the environment lighting pass will look exactly the same as ambient occlusion pass. But if we use the sky color or sky texture, as in our case, this environment lighting pass will look like this, so it gets the tint from the sky texture in this case. We can use HDR images for the sky texture, so then the environment light could in some cases be the only light source in our scene. As you can see, the environment lighting and the ambient occlusion are very similar. Ambient occlusion is in fact the part of environment light. This is the light emitted from the sky, which is blocked by the ambient occlusion. Okay, so we have two more elements that we need, which are the reflections, the regular reflections and the specular. That's how the specular looks like, and it mimics the reflections of the light sources of the lamps. Regular reflections are the reflections of other objects in our material. There are, however, issues with the reflection pass. This is how the reflection pass of this image looks like. You will notice that we have some negative values, we have some strange tint, but I will come back to the reflection pass in a separate video. It needs some further explanation. Reflections, regular reflections and specular should be added to our image after the shading, lighting components are combined with the color. Here we also have something that is called refraction and this represents the transparency. But I will also come back to refraction in separate video because it has even more issues than reflections and in fact when I'm combining the passes that come from Blender's internal render engine I very rarely use refraction. In fact I never use refraction. I take care about the transparency using some other methods. So this was the introduction to render passes. Here are the passes that we need. Here are the passes that we have by default. You see that some elements are missing, so we will have to find the way to create them on our own. I will explain all this in next videos.